Welcome to Ultimate Sensei, a chess coaching competition unlike any other. Over the next several weeks, four of the world's best trainers will work with eight hungry students, ready to do whatever it takes to improve their game. Who will work the hardest to improve? Whose methods will prove supreme? And who will become the ultimate sensei? Um, below Mitch and I, you can see um, a beautiful screen capture of a beautiful spreadsheet. Um, nothing better than that. And uh, this is what we're going to use to track the results of the four matches that we've got today. So you can see mm -hmm. um, the sort of championship match in the upper left-hand corner here. And that's chess numbers against Falk. And so, yeah. you know, at stake, first and second, eight points versus seven points. Below them, you can see the index on Chess Maestro 2021 in the seventh to eighth place match. And at stake, two points or one point. And then over below Mitch, we've got the two third through sixth place matches. Uh, and the winners of each of those matches will get five and a half points. And the losers of each of those matches will get three and a half points for their team. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I, I believe it's organized also by a uh, higher seed on top. So those players should get white in the first game, uh, unless I messed that up. Okay, well, you've got chess numbers and Dritman correct. Seth is a top seed as well. And then the index is a seed above chess maestro. Yeah, you got it all right. Absolutely. Great. So the player on top in these matches here is always the player who has white in game one, three, and any tie break game five, seven, etc. Um, so the format for today, uh, I can jump over to for a second over here, I guess. Uh, here's the format for the finals matches. We're going to have four game matches. The time control is 15 plus 5, just like it was yesterday, just like it was on day one for these players when they came into that draft tournament excited, nervous, anxious, mm -hmm. you know, wondering what it would be like to have 10 weeks of private lessons with a coach and wondering if they were going to play one bad move that day and not get picked. Um, uh, as I said, the higher seed starts with white. If the match is tied they just keep going until somebody wins a game so the important point there is that that gives you some advantage by playing white in the odd numbered games because if you play white in game five and you win you don't need to play a game six to equalize colors it's just over so the only way one of these matches goes a long time is if you get a long series of draws mitch have we had a single draw yesterday in all the matches. We didn't have a single draw yesterday, and I can't even remember if there was a single draw in the draft tournament. Yeah, uh, I, I there don't was. There, there was a draw in the draft tournament. Okay, but that so was like one... you know twelve, pl <laughs> twelve yeah. players, four rounds. Um, so there was a, a draw in the draft tournament, but there wasn't any in the exhibition matches. Uh, so there was one yeah. draw this season so far. Okay. Uh, also, I believe I, I got the team prizes wrong in this graphic. Uh, um, I forgot to tell you that before uh, we went live sorry about that everyone oh, that's my okay. fault um oh right i can go fix those um okay folks so before before we do that let's continue the point about no draws so famously <laughs> yesterday uh this end game here was reached between seth and falk which i immediately evaluated as this is a drawish end game that will end with somebody blundering and losing uh, and part of the reasoning for that was that there had been zero draws so far in this tournament, right? So if you have zero draws ever, then you need a really, really dead drawn position before you start predicting a draw. And this imbalance, the mix of opposite colored bishops, the knight that can hop around one player having more pawns than the other player, there's just so many things that can happen. Um, and we're going to be reviewing both of the matches that gave us uh, our championship bracket. So we'll be looking into, into uh, these games in a little bit here. But uh, let, me, let me finish up 
the uh, discussion of the format here. So we don't expect a super long match. Like in theory, they could be playing and playing and playing, but we we expect that there will be at most one or two draws in a single match, uh, even if it's tied. Um, I would be yeah. I would be surprised if we get a really long string. Thrilled, mm -hmm. but but surprised and. I know that up to a certain level, it's like very rare to have a lot of draws. Yeah. I, I mean, you, I would agree. you would expect one or two draws in like a full day of play, but you wouldn't like expect that nobody could break through and they're searching for an opening advantage with white mm -hmm. at, you know, the 1600 level. I, I completely agree. I think if we had seen any draws, I think we would have seen them in round one. Um, I think that, uh, those rounds, interestingly, I, I thought that each of the the round one setups uh, were um, the players of similar styles. Uh, so I think we could have seen some draws in in round one. But uh, mm -hmm. now I think that uh, we kind of have opposites uh, in most of the 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 matches, which I, I find very interesting. Oh, yeah, that's uh, we, true. We, that's true. We see Falk uh, versus Chess Numbers and. We had a, a discussion, or you had a discussion with uh, Matt, I think, on the variance uh, of some of the players with uh, me pointing out in my predictions that Chess Numbers and Dritman were the two highest variance players. And after watching um, Dai play as well, I, I think uh, he's a, another one of the high variance players, mm -hmm. um, where I think that Chess Numbers has the highest variance of all uh, of the all of the field uh, I, I said in my predictions i could see him getting first or, or eighth and it's looking like he's vying for first right now yeah <laughs> um but um i i think that he has very high variance and uh we'll, we'll go over some of his games and um i we saw with uh his game second game with ritman um completely losing position that he ended up winning and uh same with a, a one of his games against die um very uh fortunate to get the the win in the second game uh and uh but he also had an extremely clean game against Dritman in the first game um mm -hmm. so i i think uh chess numbers is a very high variance player but i think falk is mr consistency uh so yeah. i think we have a uh the championship is going to be um two opposites there mm -hmm. uh on on that spectrum and then i think uh, the seventh eighth match is going to be very interesting because we have Chess Maestro who flagged in one of his games versus Dai who was playing extremely quickly. The fastest of anybody, yeah, that's right. You've got the slowest player against the fastest player there. Yeah, um, and then we've got um, Rengal versus Dritman. Uh, I think is another kind of case of consistency versus uh, variance mm -hmm. uh, with Dritman and, and Rengal. I think being the second most consistent, second most. Uh, variance uh players uh mm -hmm. i don't have a a, a track talk track for seth versus morphe fan i don't see an opposites there okay um but may maybe you can say solid versus attacking right um yeah despite his 1d4 repertoire it's clear that morphe fan's a very aggressive player um, yeah it's, morphe fan's repertoire is very interesting because it's almost exactly mine other than his response to d4 um mm -hmm. so uh, I, I've enjoyed watching some of Morphe fans' games uh, to get some ideas for my own repertoire. Yeah, maybe Morphe fan along with Dritman are the two most likely to sacrifice material mm -hmm. um, in this field, and Seth is probably one of is probably maybe the least likely to sack material. Although he did play a sacrifice yesterday um, in his game with Falk, which uh, which Andras mm -hmm. was like rooting for. So um, we can't we can't pigeonhole anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those, those are the matchups. Let me finish up over here with our, um, with our rules. We've got the, the correct team prizes up now. There's $1,000 to the top team, $800 to the second place team, uh, $600 to the third team and $400 to the fourth team. And, uh, these teams have already racked up some winnings over the course of the season through mm -hmm. each of the, uh, special events on, uh, on our Saturdays every two weeks. Uh, there were $600 at stake there. The way the team score is going to work out today is you can look at the individual scores down there and then just however they finish up. Um, congratulations, by the way, to King is Watching, in Innerd Games, and Ed on Arrival for winning the Dojo Sunday 
morning under 1000 section. All right, and we've got games already starting right here, a C3 kind of Sicilian over here from uh, from Bob Joe Jim. Kostya, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Sensei. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Uh, how are you doing so far? Enjoying watching uh, day one? I saw you were in chat. How do you feel it went for for your team or for the show as a whole? Uh, day one, I thought went uh, went fine. Um, it looks like Chess Maestro is having uh, trouble starting the game. I'm not sure if we need to help him with that. Have all the games started? Um, I see two of the four games have started. Oh, okay. All right, cool. I guess I'll figure it out. But um, yeah, I thought day one went great. Uh, Falk obviously did did really well. Drimmen, I thought, did great the, the first match. And then um, he... Uh, I felt like we were actually pretty close, right, to coming back in the second match. Um, so I thought that was that was good. Honestly, the first day it seemed like any match could go like either way. So, <laughs> like the fact that they got some wins, I think, is is a big success because, like, they easily could have uh, lost both their first matches. Like they had really tough opponents, and um, but overall, I think they played great. I think they totally like rised up to the to the occasion. Um, so I'm hoping they have a good day today for sure, but I think they already like achieved a lot yesterday. So that was, uh, that was great to see. Yeah, cool. We've got all four games going now as well. So we are set on the technical side here for the moment. So super good. That's awesome. good there. Awesome. Um, I, I do think Dritman is quite comfortable with, with low time and playing on the increment. Uh, Ringa, I'm not not as sure about. I feel like he maybe gets a little bit more nervous, but the position is honestly so complicated, and they don't have any time that mm -hmm. like either one of them is very capable of blundering, which is of course uh, nerve wracking here. I and, think you should play uh, e5 here <laughs> to defend <laughs> c2 with his queen. So I'm so afraid he's going to get mated on c2 at some point to like g1, and he takes it in this. Yeah, I think now we might be getting that repetition now that Black's. Uh, oh, okay. Black's G-Pawn looks super, super scary. Super scary. Amazing oh. the counterplay Rangai generated with that G-Pawn. No, Drimmon's really going for the win here. I mean, he I really don't blame him. Like, he, he thinks he's better, so he wants to. And he feels very, very comfortable, again, I should say, um, playing on the five seconds. So Right. But, uh, yeah, it's super, super risky here. Yeah. With uh, G1 he's equals got... queen just being a huge threat. Yeah, it's it's a mess. I I would probably just take the repetition as white. Like I don't see a yeah. clean. A when clean his knight was game. back on d4, he was definitely winning. But now, yeah, I think it, but it was so hard back then. It was yeah. very very hard. I guess he could play c3 if he just wants to keep going, right? C3. That's true. That's true. Four seconds. Oh, F4, F4? No, I don't like F4. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> wants to play Queen G7, F5, but G1 is going to cover G7. Something else happens. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a five-second increment, by the way. Folks who, who don't know the format here, it's 15 plus 5 is the time control here. Knight to like, somewhere random off on the side. I mean, oh, my gosh. At least now there's no, there's no mate, so that's... Right. Good, yeah, Black but, missed the chance uh, to to play G one and Queen on and no, Queen C two. This is this is turning that night is not well on B seven. No, Black can just promote. Mm -hmm. And he does, and now there's trade on D one. Rook F one is very clean. Oh man. And that yeah. is G. That's gonna G. do. It. Queen D six. Styling, showing that he can see the whole board under pressure. Uh, wait, <laughs> king takes rook. How is that the move that forces resignation? <laughs> that's a little bit weird. That's that's a very funny case of mutual 
blindness. They yeah. both saw the X-ray. <laughs> yeah. Now Dripman's like gesturing, like you know, he's he, he's gesturing on camera, like what? Like he just didn't take my queen, and I resigned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's still completely over. Not a huge, yeah, not, <laughs> not, not a not a huge like game changing resignation. Oh, um. Man. Wow. Well, that was that was intense. Um. Trippman showed a great, great, great desire to win there. They're going straight into game two now um, of their four-game match. Today's format is four-game matches at 15 plus five. Um, I'll click to the other game that's the lowest on time, but we're still going to take a quick moment to properly welcome our Raiders and introduce ourselves. Thank you, folks, for being here. If you don't know who we are at Chess Dojo, Chess Dojo is run by three chess teachers, and um, this is what we are, a community that values supportiveness, growth mindset, friendship, and camaraderie, and you can see that this show that you're watching now is a show about growing, about players improving. We're a place to learn together, practice together, enjoy chess together, and we come up with new ideas for uh, chess entertainment, you know, shows like this one here, which is like a totally different scenario. Um, just seeing what can you do with a 1500 player in 10 weeks? How good can they get? Um, we've got three great teachers, Kosti and myself included, and Grandmaster Jesse Cry is the third of us. And then we have, you know, a Discord server, a Twitch channel, YouTube channel, chess.com group. You're all probably familiar with all that stuff, but those are all the places that you can find us. Um, here are a number of the shows that we do. We run viewer tournaments where we comment on the viewers' games. We have viewers send in games that they've already played, and we do more in-depth analysis of those games. We've got a talk show slash podcast where we talk about things like, you know, fee day for a week or cheating in chess or Magnus Carlsen for a week or things like that. Um, we host the U.S. Chess School Endgame Sensei, where Kosti and I work on our own game, and uh, and so much more, as you can see. So, Kostya, what do you think of this final game going on here? Did Black just lose their bishop while I was talking? Oh no! Well, that's uh, that's definitely not good. E5 check, unsupporting the bishop on D5. Black was in total oh, control of this endgame. He did it to himself. Dang. Yeah. Under time pressure. We can say, though, that Dai has made an improvement from yesterday. This is the most time that Dai has used on any of his games. And uh, we see him now with an edge, knight against two pawns in the end game. Similar to the Geary end game that you all just watched. Uh, for those of you coming from, from Tata Steel. Black's one pawn short of the Geary endgame. So this is still going to be competitive. A knight is often better than two pawns, but usually not by a lot. The Black King should be staying closer to the center as much as possible. Right now, rook d7 is possible. So the king should have probably stayed on c7. And here comes the rook into d7. Yeah, white's white's getting in charge now. Okay, f five. Yeah, at least uh, trust my astro. It seems like he's handling the uh, the time scrambles much better today. Yes, playing much at faster uh... than previously. Wow, look at that! The moves just coming in, as if he were a blitz player. Ooh, that knight got sent somewhere not that great. He's going to be able to collect the c two pawn and. A whole new chapter <laughs> begins in this game. The fight against the C4 pawn. Right. Yeah, a whole new chapter. Yeah, now who's better? E3? <laughs> oh, the E pawn is a, is, a, is a dude as well here, huh? Oh, man. Oh, no, Dai, you don't have time for the H pawn. You need to fight Black's pawns. Black's pawns are so dangerous. Dai is looking ultra confident with his H pawn, though. Rook C5, cut him off. So white needs to trade and play king e3. Yeah, trade and play king e3 would work. Greetings, Promrad. Welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy the high-stakes finals today. 
Um, for anyone who doesn't know, there's a prize fund of $4,600 on Ultimate Sensei Season 2, and that's going to be determined today. Anyways, David, you were saying about the Endgame Challenge. <laughs> yeah, what was I saying? That that I made them play King and Pawn Endings, and they still don't know them. <laughs> oh, no, Nargu. Oh, man. Yeah. Look She's going to waltz on over now. Oh, no. Yeah. But he did that very confidently. I mean, other than his, his G1. Other than that, he didn't, he didn't rush his king to the, to the area that was open at first. God, sorry, I can't, I can't breathe for a moment here. Take me a second to uh, recover. For anybody who's new to our channel, we we take it very seriously. We really care about uh, about our dojoers, and uh, we we end up commenting a lot, a lot, a lot of games of players between let's say like six hundred and twenty two hundred, and a little bit less of like games of super GMs. Um, so, uh, so we spent a lot of time looking at, at, at this level of game and, uh, and we really care about them. Does Sasha have a, a question for us? Who sees this? A question for all the coaches. Hydrate. She wants us to hydrate maybe? I think, yeah, I think... <laughs> No, no, no. I feel like she asked us like a question about this king and pawn ending that she thinks we might not be able to solve. But I guarantee you I can solve it, Sasha. Oh, I didn't see the question. My bad. Hydrate and posture check, both? All right. This is brutal. Let's turn to another board. <laughs> yeah. All the coaches need to hydrate after this game. All right. I'm, re <laughs> I'm with you. So uh, the winning team here, this was Coach Andras who got a point here, and Nargaif, um, aka Morphe fan, pushes Seth to the edge in this match. Only needs half a point more here. Yeah, but um, two games to go. Falk found something called Bishop C6 double X clam, supposedly in the game. All right, so Bishop C6 was played. Rookie six. No wait, sorry. Where's the real position? Rook c7, b3, rook a7, b2, bishop c6, rook e6. Okay, so I think Merle's point is that uh, that Falk is going to play bishop b5 next and be able to uh, basically win this endgame against Bob Joe Jim probably and tie up the championship match here. How do people get into this competition is a great question, Jaliptic, that's on everybody's mind. You apply. When we uh, announce the next season three, we will put out an open call for applications. Anybody can apply. Um, and, you know, we're looking for a few different things in the uh, in the students, but anybody can apply. And uh, you just have to be within the, the correct rating range for whatever that season is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to be overly dramatic, and maybe there's, maybe there's, you know, complications driven and can work up, but certainly it's, like, in danger of collapse once White's Rook is... Yeah, yeah, the, the trend has drastically uh, changed in White's favor. He needs a move like, I don't know, like um, B4, C takes B4, Rook F4, or something like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. My feeling it's like objectively still okay. This is also an idea because oh, on cool. Rook A6, he can go E4. Yeah. I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping he finds that. Um, but it, it could very, very easily still go south. Uh, I, 100% black. he planned E4 when he played Rook F6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this plays in immediately. Yeah. He did this on purpose. And now it's completely a two-way street after rook okay, e5. Yeah. The e pawn yeah, is yeah. strong. With the time, yeah, anything can happen. Oh, Jeez, my I gosh. Take, I was playing it a little pawn. bit too much like a middle game there. <laughs> I'm trying to crack White's king position. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. He loves these kinds of moves, though, when it's like you could just take a pawn, but you throw more fire onto the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is good in the middle game, like you said, but in the end game, it can be very strong in the end game too. Here, I think rook d5 was, was strong enough. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it activates your rook, not their rook. Whereas when you play g5, you're kind of like looking to trade their rook. But here, you're like, my rook's good, my e pawn's coming. Like, whoa. Yeah, why not? Oh, wow. Rango with the open mind. With the open mind, realizing that you can even play this move. Oh, if his pawn were on e3 before he played g5, he could play e2 after. 
<laughs> after that. Yeah, trade. rook b6, e3, but he, <laughs> no, Ringo is very careful here. It's still, uh, okay, it's a pawn up for white, but pawn it still feels uh, drawable. Like e3, rook f2 check. Mm -hmm. e3, rook f1, rook f1 okay. though? e3, oh, rook, rook f1. f1 would. Rook f1, good point. Would cover him. Yeah. yeah, he's played the best choice he has here, I think, which is rook f5, and then on rook e1, you take, take, take and rook, rook, d2. rook d2, and you can hold. Yeah. For sure. And German really needs to be okay with a draw here, because there's two more games, and he yeah. can still come back. If he plays a move like rook e5, trying to be better, the white king is closer than the black king. It's That's an overplay. Yeah, for sure. So, Okay. It's on the board. Yeah. A little similar to game one, like really, really like high, you know, killer instinct or desire to win from uh, from Dritman. Oh, and this king's coming to f4. Yeah, very much so. And the chance to save the game is... Well, I would think it's technically winning for white now. So it's just a question of difficulty. Like, you can bring your rook to b to d2 still, but white plays rook b4, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not, like, so easy for white, but it um, definitely just, like, feels like more chances. Like, definitely better than 50-50, I feel. Win versus draw. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the best move next is going to be a rook d3 check. Because I don't think rook d2, rook b4 is helpful for black. So white's thinking, which means he's considering also playing king f4 here, as well as rook e4. But that would be an overplay. Good yeah. move. He's got under 10 seconds, and he doesn't find rook b4. No, that seems to allow black to trade everything. Yep, rook trade, two. push the B pawn, and run away with that draw. Or even uh, rook B3 first, maybe. Or even rook B3 first, yeah. Why not then, win the uh, pawn? Why trade it when you can win it? And then B4. Okay, now white needs to be, white needs to not panic, because he's still fine. Yeah, good choice there with rook B6, actually. That's probably yeah, this one is of the better a, ways to try and hold. This is definitely, uh, yeah. With white Easy draw. low on time, that was good. That was good. And then send the king towards the pass pawn. Oh, I'm impressed with uh, Renga's uh, endgame instincts right here. Not the strongest part of his game normally, but um, under time pressure, he really found the right ideas here. Yeah, I mean, okay, he could have definitely maybe put more pressure, but with this time, it's it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I don't know. I don't think king h4 there made a huge difference because anyway, uh, black had to defend the b pawn, so... You can't, like, uh, at this point, I think white is 100% fine with the draw. Yeah. It's funny that the player with, like, the advantage in the end game was, like, more okay with the draw than the player who should have been <laughs> trying to defend. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Okay, so Dritman's not going to try playing like b4 and allowing rook b7, huh? He's going to finally take the first draw of the finals. Yeah, so um, I see one how's it going? On stream. <laughs> I see you've been watching the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was watching whole thing today and like I watched half yesterday because it was pretty late and I was tired. So mm -hmm. like during second half, I was just like opening games sometimes, you know, and... <laughs> Okay, Davin is in chat already. <laughs> yeah. So um, your players are both on the break between the second and third games right now. Um, yeah. Rangao is ahead by one point today, and Dai is ahead by two points. So are you satisfied with um, their play so far today from what you were watching? Uh, I'm really I'm really happy with their team management today because yesterday it was a little bit not so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but today today I'm really glad that David can take his time even though like it's uh, like in second game maybe it was a little bit too slow, but it's still like not with the bullet, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really proud. <laughs> 
Good. <laughs> Good. I, I'm very impressed too. Did you did you talk to Dai about this before today? Uh yeah, yeah. I mean we even trained like um increment before tournament and mm -hmm. um and like yesterday during warm up I think Devin just played uh way too much against without increment and it didn't really help. <laughs> no, it didn't fail me, Devin. <laughs> I would say, you know, for different players watching, the advice is slightly different um, because it depends on how far you can confidently calculate ahead. And every player knows that, should know that number for themselves, right? Like, are your, are your calculations usually accurate to one move, two moves, four moves, six moves? You should know for yourself about how far. And, um, and then if that's the case and there's some key variation I think there's a lot of cases where you should double check it the first time you calculate it. And then once you've made the decision and you know what line you want to play, you know, just follow up a little bit faster. And, you know, if you just look at Maestro's time usage, like clearly he could use some more moves where he just follows up quickly. He's uh, he's using his extra time and that's probably keeping him from, from blundering anything. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not even about blunders. He just doesn't let opponent chances. Like, doesn't give any chance. Yeah. Uh, he's so Don't slow about maybe? advancing his pawns, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He makes us wait forever. Yeah, just... sometimes it's cut it to just make this final push, King you know? F2 is the end now. That's just a tactic. Okay. okay, yes. That's just a tactic. Bob Joe Jim trying to set up knight d4, but he, I mean, he's playing these moves with three or four seconds on his clock, so... Okay, okay, it's not so simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, knight a5. I don't like knight a5. Yeah. Eh, he just needed to move something. He had 1.7 yeah, seconds I mean, left when he... King d6, no. not your knight to a5. King f2? What on earth? Oh my god, what are you calculating there? I, I don't know. Now the knight no, comes I mean, back I to c6. It keeps going and going. And bishop f3 will finally end it. Oh. Oh. No. Okay, I didn't want it to finish, but okay, it's there's, so... there's the look of you've got it. You wanted to keep going with this? <laughs> this is pretty funny. This was too tense I for me. I expected the white to blunt or something. Yeah? Oh, I was really uncomfortable watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't have any nervous left already, so I, I can watch it. You can just you can just laugh. It doesn't hurt you anymore. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if you've got anything left. If we bring your student back on screen, Renga here. <laughs> yeah. Quickly. And now but... they get to like think really hard on these really really hard moves here. Yeah. A funny thing about this particular line, which you know I've seen like Karyakin and Anand and like other players of that level discuss at length in classical chess is even in classical chess with two hours on the clock what you'll see is the players will play like 17 to 20 moves in in one minute you know just the time of writing down their moves and then three moves later at move 22 they'll be in time pressure <laughs> on like a 40 yeah, move in yeah. two kind of situation because you know usually that's some kind of long preparation yeah and if you get some problem it means just that your opponent prepared one more move. Yeah. So it means you need to spend a lot of time. The right position's now. so critical that if you make one mistake, you could lose. If your opponent prepped yeah. one move more than you or one idea you don't know, you might need like an hour to look, you know, eight, ten moves yeah. ahead in these positions and find your way. Um, the exact uh, table here of all the money that they've that they've won along the season to add to this. I had it somewhere up here. I had how much money had been won along the way. Um, these team prizes here of uh, 250, 350, 800, and 400. So we could, we can, we can add those in here if we want. We know that uh, Team Matt is going to get another 800 from the challenges. We know that uh, Team Sasha is going to get another 400 from the challenges. And Team Andros with 250. And Team Kostya with another 350. Uh, Mitch has done a lot of work, so I will leave it to all of you. Why doesn't it show up here? Who knows? It's weird. 
Oh, I just need to scroll down. There it is. Oh, Mitch has done a lot of work. I'll let you all <laughs> add this up. So I believe you have some chance that um, their guy will be in time with his kid. Right. If we, <laughs> if we stretch this out, we might get to see his kid. We can yeah. applaud his kid. Um, <laughs> Rangal can uh, thank his kid in person for the crushing <laughs> exhibition match victory <laughs> assist. Um. All right, I'll, I'll let you throw a question at, at some of the players and I will grab some water. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so who's the winner here? <laughs> can you can you do like this? <laughs> okay. Well, <Paul>, can you? <laughs> Seems like we need to hear from the winners. <laughs> it's kind of funny because they show to the different people. <laughs> okay, okay, so what do you think about your final match okay david is here back okay thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i'm here what's up I mean, I was yeah but i asked about so... final match like how how hard how they was, feel actually. about the final match yeah i was super nervous and i blundered on move two in my first game so <laughs> well, that's uh... Okay. Here I just thought you were super ready for my. Uh, no, <laughs> I was so nervous. I was like uh, <laughs> messing that, it up already. Uh -huh. You call a blunder through me. I didn't want to play that line, and I had to go back into it because I didn't know anything against Maxi <laughs> Six. Okay, that's what good. What was the blunder for those who didn't see? So um. Yeah. <laughs> so was oh, it yeah. about oh, luck whoa. or about chess mostly? Um. Sorry. I don't know like tournament itself like final tournament like what do you think how how big part was about luck and how big part mm. was about like chess i think less luck for sure yeah it's a lot more pleasant playing people that are trying like this than online rated elo stuff it's different yeah the first day was well y'all saw terrible for me it took a, you know <laughs> getting used to it was just not I was flustered. I, yeah, it's definitely an experience. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I think even yeah. more so this day than yesterday. There's something about a four game match. It's like you're you're seeing them play your opponent play white and black a second time. It really starts yeah. feeling more like a match. Yesterday, like felt still a little exhibitiony or like oh we'll play a white and a black. But once you start hitting four games, it really, you really kind of get into the head of how the other person's playing and you can kind of prep for the second half of it a bit to try to throw, throw a curveball in. Um, so yeah, the four game was like a very new type of playing chess for me, a four game match. And I actually really enjoyed it. I Even more than like a four game Swiss or something. I can agree with that for sure. Um, it was not that it worked out for me, but it was really interesting going into that last must win game to be in a position where like, okay, so I'm going to have to play against this Trumpowski again, because I know <laughs> I, he beat, he already beat me with it once. Now I have to figure out some, a different approach of some kind. So that was definitely a twist because it was a four game match that is different from any high stakes chess game I've ever played before. Yeah. We ran the, um, the dojo club championships as a series of matches, three rounds of matches. And those, the, the quarterfinals were four games, semifinals, six games, finals, eight games. I'm sure some of you uh, yeah, yeah. saw some of those matches. Um, and the participants in those matches were like, wow, this was like a whole new experience for my chess. And a lot of them like felt like they improved a lot over that month and a half between preparing for the matches, playing the matches, just made them like work on chess in a, or look at chess in a different way. Yeah, I think that did happen to me, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was my first time playing matches like this. And um, so I got to like get that experience of getting like smashed by some opening prep, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> uh, but just like the um, real competitive nature of everyone too. You don't really yeah. feel that casual, you know? And, and, yeah. Like, damn, this guy is not giving up, man. And I think it, you know, it does, ex <laughs> yeah, it exposes a bit. It's like, geez. <laughs> of a weakness I have in the opening with just, uh, just a lack of versatility, probably. <laughs> yeah, ability we, to change it we up. Like eight weeks to prepare for you, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you know, I, I just figured I'd just stick with what I was comfortable with. That was giving me my best chance, but you know. I mean, this, Seth, me and you are probably the two least versatile opening players here. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was, it was oh, definitely well. interesting going in being like, 
especially yesterday when um Kostya had me prep that Italian uh which I played like a little back when I was rated 1200 but not with the the knight f1 line that he showed me so went really well in the first round though so I mm -hmm. guess it's like it's still possible even on short notice to play something different but it does kind of take a bit of a leap of faith right that's what i did that finally today i played nice. that. i've never i've never played the slav in my life and i played it both games against lars and i got i had great positions with black both games so <laughs> you know and i was like i was like oh man this is gonna go bad because like i'll know the first few moves but he plays he's gonna be, have so much more experience than me but yeah the middle game understanding is, is the one thing that's tough I was kind of happy to go to five games there because like the first game in the draft you didn't i think know your moves i've i messed that up too pretty good but then the second game like you studied over the break and i've lost in that like exact fashion before and like i forgot how to like how black is okay in that line so i just like totally forgot and then i'm like well let's try the night orb. so then i think we got a theoretical position I think if you play queen a8 instead of queen a5, you actually have a repetition. Yeah, queen a8 was a good move. I was unsure about queen a8, queen a5. And I think the only reason it's a repetition is because you can exchange sack for my bishop on c1 because I took the f pawn. And I think if I want to play for a win, I actually have to go a pawn down. Like, what I think I like not that. take on f7? Yeah. Because he can essentially exchange sack bishop on c1, and then I can't ever block the check after like queen c1, queen a1, and then like the queen can check over on the c file and back and forth, kind of. I think. I, was, I mean, I, 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 I didn't look at an engine, this. but I, I think he had a. It's a forced repetition. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know, and I was out of theory after you played. You could block with queen now. After you took. No, so so in this line, take on f7. I'm just watching the stream right now and like mm -hmm. play through the game um, yeah. and play queen a8 instead of queen a5. It's a stream. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, queen a8 was much better. Queen a8, and also then I have to play knight g3 because I want to be able to block checks after I go to the c file with bishop c4. Oh, but here you can play rook takes f1. Yes. Rook takes f1. Uh, rook a1, king c2, queen c8, uh, king d3, and then queen b5 is a repetition. Yeah, I've seen this line before. Very you see, nice, I calculated some line? crazy lines as okay. well. Yeah, so I think I have to actually pawn, pawn sack and not take on, on f7. Wow. Good calculation, Dremen. <laughs> One move too late, but thank you. <laughs> Like, I wonder what the difference between taking and not taking on F7 is. And I was like, eh, might as well take the pawn. And then I kind yeah. of figured out what the what the issue was. I but, mean, one big oh. difference is black might not be able to take on A2 because you're threatening to take the knight. So they might yeah. so you might get a totally different position where they don't get your A pawn. Mm. Yeah. King was hiding on D3. Yeah. Yeah. But um but good job backing up my claim that you can calculate long lines. <laughs> and for once, I did it for my opponent. Uh, yeah, and for your opponent too. That's good. That's good. Looking for moves for your opponent. That's that's what you're working on, huh? <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, is there any any student here who feels like uh, they were able to specifically improve on something because of something their coach? like gave to them over these weeks, something that you wouldn't have been able to do on your own or wouldn't have thought of doing? Wanting... I mean, I know I, but it's it's not gonna be anything extravagant. I think she just exemplified mainly for me, the importance of um, identifying what your bad pieces are and what their good pieces are and make those exchanges or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, that gets really, I think exchanges are crazy complicated. Yeah. Like there's so many <laughs> things that can get involved with an exchange, you know? Yeah. So she said something to me in that last lesson that really, every time I go for an exchange, I sit there and I take a step back and um, really mm -hmm. evaluate how that, how valuable that piece is in that moment. And then that just leads to other ideas. And that just, to me, that was something I knew, but a good coach will make you, um, you know, make it stick. 
Because yeah. you know all this information, but it doesn't, you don't apply it on the board. You think you are, but there's something about like getting it really clear to where I'm like, oh, dang, that is true. You don't want to do that, you know? And then you never do it again. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think so. In yeah. calculations, of course, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'd say like the one chest, like the chest stuff is always hard to get better at like the on the board stuff and like one thing i need to get better at is still um finding my opponent's resources in a position especially when like i'm better or winning but they have counterplay mm -hmm. um and kosio did a good job like identifying at that but i you know it's only eight weeks and it's like gonna be a long slog of me getting better at that but i do think i got better at not tilting over the course of this competition mm -hmm. um for instance like I mean, it was a crazy time scramble, but I probably missed a mate in the first game. I know I missed a mate. Eric, one. And then I lost because I, again, didn't want to just take a repetition. Yeah. Um, and then the last game, I was down a piece. Yeah. And I needed to win the game. I blundered it back. So what? I said, I blundered it back. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all very friendly. I appreciate that. Um, I, was yeah, I, I do think I got better at not tilting and kind of, you know. Thing with it that's something i need to get work on too <laughs> yeah i was i was baffled when i thought you dropped the piece and then i didn't like i did such like a rookie mistake like i didn't even know like i had to scroll back a few moves to be like wait I'm, materials even now what, what, what? right you're like, like where is my piece? i don't even remember <laughs> when you took if it I, if I take the normal if i take the other way without trading queens i i hang my queen yeah because my bishop was loose or something but i was just like I, i'm like I've like seen my friend who is like much lower rated, like do that type of thing, like go backwards, like where? Right. I'm like, I just all been there. And you're like, I always know where my pieces are. I would notice if somebody took one. <laughs> and then, I, nope. I might have, I might have done a backwards scroll to figure out what happened once during today's games. Also, uh huh. <laughs> might have. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. You know, you guys are taking off, but, but you know, you've got, like, your peak performance, and you've also still got some of, like, the trailing weaknesses that you've mostly cleaned up, but will will pop up now and then uh, in a rare occasion. Um, I'd say there's two things I would highlight that I learned. Um, one of them I don't know that I was able to demonstrate too well. It was we did a lot of strategic work because, obviously, I'm a super often over-aggressive attacking player who has always badly neglected strategy in my chess study in my career. And Matt worked with me a ton on that. I definitely learned a ton. It might take more than nine weeks for that to really make its way into my game. That's the kind of more long-term study, but definitely a lot of learning. I need more practice before I'll really be applying it correctly. But the other really big thing as an attacking player that he did a great job of emphasizing for me on quite a few occasions was that when you're attacking, you still don't have to make every single move be super completely aggressive. There's room for those quiet moves to build so that the attack can actually land, which I would like to think I demonstrated that quite well in my first game today before falling apart. <laughs> mm-hmm. And maybe could have remembered that more in games two, three, and four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That first game was, you know, maybe the best game we've uh, we've seen in these finals. So, yeah, you really did put it all together in that attack. Yeah. Can we look at uh, Kid before we finish? Okay. I feel like he, he there tried to show us some blanket and Yeah no he's trying to get me <laughs> behind me right now actually. <laughs> Sasha, okay. Sasha, did you see when I was playing Lars like a week ago or whatever? Oh and... yeah, I yeah. saw it. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, if you want to see more of the kid, friend, so. <laughs> if you want to see more of the kid, we just need um, Lars and Dritman to play a hundred dollar blitz match right now. Six <laughs> games, six games, hundred dollars, and I'm sure the kid will come right back with that blanket. Yeah. <laughs> Over the head. Yeah. Oh man. Like it's funny because when that happened, it's like I know the amount of work that he had to do to 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 put that blanket on my head. 
So I'm like sitting at the kitchen table here. So he was like, grabbed it off the couch, ran over here. He had to climb up a chair, then pull the blanket up onto the chair. And then he was throwing it onto my head. So yeah. like, it was something he was very determined to do at this Commitment, time. commitment yeah. and effort is yeah. crucial at every he's, stage. He's GM of annoying me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here, buddy. <laughs> so anyway, he doesn't want to be on camera now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But I, I do want to say, because I was listening in, like, I uh, had it on, like, the Bluetooth in my car. So I was listening to the stream. And, um, yeah, Seth, like, the the Slav actually surprised me. I looked at what you had played, and I didn't expect you to play the Slav. And then you also picked a line that I haven't really studied that much, and I haven't really... And every time I've played it, I've gotten positions I was unhappy with. Uh, when you put the queen on c7 there, so yeah, yeah, and that was give actually a, why in the second game I just played exchange slav. So uh, a tip of the cap to to the maestro there. I actually took that one from him. He played that yeah, and got a really yeah. And position. actually, that's that was that was a line Andrus recommended to him against me. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. By, by so checking his games. <laughs> so no, so Matt went through and he's like, well, you know, he's like, he's like, you know, we're talking about what we should play, and I'm like, you know, are they gonna just like, you know, I play, I put a million, um, I put a million Tarash defenses in my opening tree, and I was like, well, are they gonna poke a hole in it? He's like, well, I don't know, and I don't really have to. Resort. So you can try it, you can stick with that, you can try this queen game at the client or there's this game uh maestro played against them that where the slob went yeah pretty well. from their own like, training on their own team <laughs> yeah and actually like the funny thing is, is i was debating whether i should look at any slav lines last night and i was like you know what i'm just gonna win with the black pieces because like i knew you would come in like super prepped with the Ragozin. and like i used to play the king's indian all the time so uh, oh, it was just a matter of like, it, it was just a matter of just like prepping the King's Indian. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause like, well, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I figured I didn't realize you were, had been a King's Indian player in the past. Cause I was like, okay, if he goes into King's Indian, at least, you know, he might've prepped something for me, but he's hopefully treading into unfamiliar territory, but he just smashed me twice. That was unfortunate. <laughs> okay. Matter, Here's a question for all of you. And we can do like a show of hands. How many of you prepared openings specifically for these finals matches for more than two hours? Okay, three people for sure, and two people maybe. I feel like I'm always I, studying I'm um, that none openings. Of it, none of it ended up on the board. None of it ended up on the board. <laughs> sure. I think like 20 hours or so. And nothing specific though. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> like, okay. like Wait, depending on how you look at it. 20 like, hours since right. yesterday? Um, you said no, I mean, since since when we started like, I mean. Oh, I, I started prepping specifically for Falk weeks ago. Weeks ago? It's yeah, I, mean, I, I have to fall back. Because he plays play literally everything. Because I had prep for him that I didn't want to show in case I saw him in the finals. Mm -hmm. And then he dodged it with his prep. None of it ended up on the board today. <laughs> wow. If you if you had, Falk, if you had brought the uh, Roy Lopez like you've pay, played against me yeah. in the past, I was going to play the Yanish ga Gambit. <laughs> oh, okay. That's actually a good choice. Like, I've never faced it, I think. But yeah. <laughs> I kind of... Um... <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I, I knew about Ty's uh, super secret Falk prep, and um, and I'm kind of not surprised. I went after my match with Falk yesterday. I'm like, because I saw I saw Falk's like chess based files on on all of them. Like, ah, eh, it's probably not gonna happen. But at mm -hmm. least he's, you know, at least they'll both be out, and then that'll be fine. Yeah, walking into Falk's chess based files is like not a good place to be. Just okay. as a heads up. <laughs> Paul right. Sam Shanklin Harrison. <laughs> I looked at what but, other people played, and I didn't really like come up with anything brand spanking new that I haven't played. Mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of saw what lines other people played, so I wouldn't. I would have some sense of familiarity. Like I knew which Roy Lopez that Driven played. Right. Um, some yeah. people surprised me though. So you didn't try to like memorize a bunch of extra GM moves, but you said like, okay, these are kind of the openings that they play. And then you like checked in with Sasha, like, you know, Dragon, Nidorf, something, you know. And so yeah. you had some thought about what you wanted to do. Looked at GM games and looked at like some ideas, like in this structure or like what are some plans in this type of position type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the finals prep for me, it was kind of tough because Ringo's account 
is in his real account. He yeah. just plays dojo tournaments on that, and all of his game history is in some like secret account. And like all of my games are just on my account. Uh-huh. So instead of like prepping for him, yeah. So I knew he played the Roy Lopez as white. Um, it says I played the King's Gambit. That's for sure. Well, so you kind of <laughs> let slip that you play the Roy because in our ex- exhibition match, after you played something that you normally don't play and got crushed, you were like. Oh, I should have just played the Roy like normal. And I was like, oh, interesting. Ah, yeah. useful. I didn't mind. I didn't mind so so all what me and Kosia did, instead of like trying to guess exactly what he'd play, is like make sure that I know all the little sidelines of the stuff I play. And like aren't gonna get caught too off guard if he tries to throw a curveball. Cause like I'm I'm pretty comfortable with my repertoire. Like I'm not looking for something totally new. Um but yeah, it was it was it was super helpful just to make sure that I wasn't gonna be like caught off guard by some weird line. Yeah, it's not really in my nature to like want to try to do that either. Like I like playing the main lines. I spent so many years not playing the main lines. I like playing the rich positions. Yeah, I mean, for me it was a bit upsetting because like like after the, after the draft tournament, I like looked up what everyone was playing and I created like quick starters for everything <laughs> and then like uh, three people dropped out and <laughs> i wasted like six hours of uh, prep uh, but wow. yeah in the end uh, it didn't work out because you started the prep super early <laughs> yeah it's, i mean it's what i did i mean uh, i um like i created those opening files for everyone and then i put it on um Chessable to just repeat them over and over mm-hmm. and then i picked like 10 master games from each variation and then i just studied them over the two months so we'll be wow. familiar with the variations i play Falk, let me ask you a question. Like <laughs> in the first week, you were picked first in the draft, and then Mitch and I ranked you really high in the power rankings as far as, you know, and we both said I think that we would have drafted you first, you know, if we'd been <laughs> watching that draft tournament. And then you didn't win any of the intermediate competitions. You were you were clearly preparing really hard the whole time. Did you how is your confidence over the course of the season? Like, did you ever say like, I mean, "Oh man, I should have won the end game tournament" or anything like that? I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, like before the uh, Ultimate Sense I started, like I didn't even know the opposition rules, right? So um, my endgame stuff was very basic, I guess. And I mean, I did put a lot of work in it, into it. And mm-hmm. I think if we had like more complex endings, I would have been like a lot better there. Mm-hmm. But I didn't practice King and Pawn endings. So I <laughs> uh, was a bit unlucky that those showed up. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I also went through like 100 pages of like Sherashevsky. And like I did all the settlements up to 1800. In the endgame course so mm-hmm. I, I mean i did put a lot of work into end games mm-hmm. and the same for tactics like i uh, didn't really do tactics um all that much up until ultimate sensei and then it was like the first challenge and to get good at, uh, to get good at uh, tactics in like two weeks it's not not going to happen yeah like I'm, right. i still did like an hour every day but uh, just wasn't enough here's what i'd say is the thing about Falk. he's a very well-rounded player and because of that, it's he's great in, in a match and mm-hmm. overall games. But I can see how, like, in any one component, there's someone who's going to be somewhat better. Uh huh. So I, I'm actually not surprised that this is the way it, it kind of ended up. Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. But that makes it real hard to play against. So then, how is how is your confidence fault going into the finals um, mm-hmm. yesterday? And and uh, I was not, not not scared about Eric, but uh, it was. Um... He was the one opponent I just didn't want to face because I don't know what he plays, right? He just, he just uh, plays on another account, so I couldn't check. Mm-hmm. So we kind of had to guess a bit, and it worked out in the end because I got uh, the night of I prep for, and uh, yeah, he didn't expect one C4, I guess, because I don't really play it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I guess that worked out for me. And yeah, other than that, I was I never lost confidence because I knew I was good at playing chess <laughs> and, and not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for our level, like instead of like, I'm, I'm, I might not be good at end games or tactics, but I, I mean, I'm still okay at sh- playing chess, I guess. That's, okay, the Magnus I answer. Lose comfort. <laughs> That's the Magnus answer, right? What like what advantage do you think you have in the match against Nepo? He was asked, right? Well, like my main advantage is I'm better at playing chess. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like that, but uh, just a little like that. Little, Falk's just too nice. So it's not, it sounded I mean, a bit like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. So I, I think I could speak to this. I've played Falk seven times this season. Uh-huh. Draft tournament, exhibition match, and the final. Yeah. Um, and I could definitely say Falk is an extremely difficult player to face. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um, if I had to pick 
if I, you know, had to play one more game right now for some additional prize money, I would gladly play it against anyone but Falk. Okay. <laughs> you would not uh, choose the champion. There are other great players in this field too. I mean, everyone's everyone's tough, but the the balance is really hard to deal with. Um, it just feels like you could beat me in a lot of different ways, and that makes games against you tense in a different way, and it throws me off. I can say for sure. Yeah. So I, mean, I feel like, like um, an, yeah. I feel like in our match that uh, Falk like flexed sort of his just like just like deep general knowledge. Just like like he let me like he got the good positions out of the opening then. You know, he kind of let me off the mat, but I had to spend a little bit, but then like I had to spend so much more time like trying to figure it out. And like, so he was just playing like reasonable moves. He like understood the positions, even if he wasn't finding the, you know, the best moves, I, I was able to work my way in a little bit, but then I was just hopeless at the end. It was like one minute to, to eight or whatever, you know? And so it was like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so even with like, you know, so even with like maybe some things he could clean up tactics or whatever um, to beat like players better than me, he'll get there. But like, I think just on our level, he, his, his overall like knowledge just general chance chess knowledge, I think really showed through. Yeah. I mean, the only, the one chance, that I feel I have against you, Falk, is to just try to drag you into complications where there's some hope you might go wrong. But yeah, sure. even there, you're still so principled that it doesn't work that well. I basically tried it every time we played, and I got it to work once out of seven tries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you gave me a rook at the draft, but that wasn't really anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally missed uh, that the Bushok could take the rook in the end. But yeah. But I mean, Fabi drops rooks too, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because so yeah. far, in this the Trump today. compared Falk to Shanklin, Fabi, and Magnus. <laughs> yeah, it's going going really well right now. So you know, Falk, you're about one thousand. thousand we're all expecting another thousand Elo out of you. In yeah, exactly. Like couple Clearly. Years. Yeah, I I, I I I would peg Falk as the favorite in the race to two thousand out of this group, which I think is sort of a good target improvement goal for all of us in the long run absolutely assuming great. you get a chance to play enough over the board i mean if one person plays a lot yeah, more sure. a games, great, that great thing to shoot matter. for for all of you next it's, yeah that was my goal before this uh competition and it feels more achievable now with the work i got to do with matt than it ever did before it was it, it, it used to be like an intentional long shot goal that i probably wouldn't be able to achieve but it gave me something to work on and now i kind of feel like maybe i can get there mm-hmm yeah. So. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up our season here. Sasha, I've got a last uh, question for you, the sensei. Um, what What are you focused on right now in your in your career moving forward? Are you working on coaching or playing or both or streaming? What's What's the focus of your chess life? Uh, I stopped playing OTB. Uh, after COVID started mm -hmm. for some time so and right now I'm trying to get back to working on my chest that's why I started streaming mm -hmm. because it was too boring to do myself and I never worked on chess myself so and now I at least I play some chess games wait how did I'm... how did you get to, like, <laughs> to be such a strong master without ever working on your chess uh I worked with coach like, with a coach week. okay so you've never yeah, worked just by week, yourself yeah. Yeah, but never You've always by worked myself. with others. Okay. Yeah. So and now I'm mostly coaching and trying to get back to working on my chest. So. Mm -hmm. Do you so, do yeah. so? You do training for yourself on your stream, like you do stuff that's yeah, hard for you. I I I I gonna start it from next week actually. Okay. <laughs> now uh, before that I was just playing, mm -hmm. and now I'm like uh, gonna try to get better and maybe yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, folks, here's the link again for following. Sasha slow dumb on Twitch so you can um, check out what some really serious training looks like um, I hear I hear <laughs> Sasha so that serious. you like we're pretty pretty serious with your students so I'm assuming you're going to be serious with yourself too <laughs> no more no comments <laughs> no more counter-strike says Eric no 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 <laughs> it's not so serious <laughs> not as serious as to cut counter-strike from your regimen yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Well, um, thank you so much um, for uh, for what you've done for uh, Di and Eric. And thank um, you, you're the best. <laughs> thank you to all the participants for great effort and uh, great camaraderie over the course of the season. Um, it's really fun to see you all um, giving each other like encouragement and chatting about about the events with each other when each event wraps up. People watching on stream don't know this but you know when we when we stop the obs feed these guys don't stop they're still like discussing their games with each other um here in my in my room for hours sometimes um so they've got a great attitude um and it was on display throughout so thank you everybody for all your work um i hope you all continue to to work uh, with each other because I think it's really helpful to have a cohort like that pushing each other up together and uh, it's been great I uh, anybody who wants to see uh, Ultimate Sensei Season 3 send in a donation and uh, let us know that it's for the prize fund for Season 3 that'll help us to try to attract some incredible coaches like Sasha, like Andras, like Matt and uh, we'll see you later later